Baybars or Baybars, nicknamed Abu el fatah was the fourth sultan of Egypt from the Mamluk Bara dynasty. He was one of the commanders of the Egyptian forces that inflicted a defeat on the Seventh Crusade of King Louis IX of France. He also led the vanguard of the Egyptian army at the Battle of Ain Jalut in 1260, which marked the first substantial defeat of the Mongol army and is considered a turning point in history. The reign of Baybars marked the start of an age of Mamluk dominance in the eastern Mediterranean and solidified the durability of their military system. He managed to pave the way for the end of the Crusader presence in the Levant and reinforced the union of Egypt and Syria as the region's preeminent Muslim state, able to fend off threats from both Crusaders and Mongols and even managed to subdue the Kingdom of Makuria, which was famous for being unconquerable by previous Muslim Empire invasion attempts. As Sultan, Baybars also engaged in a combination of diplomacy and military action, allowing the Mamluks of Egypt to greatly expand their empire. Name His name was derived from Kipchak Turkic Bey plus Bars. Early life Baybars was born in the Dashtai Kipchak, Cumania, between the Edel and Yaiyk rivers, to the Cumans Kipchaks. He was fair-skinned, blonde, very tall, and had a cataract in one of his bluish eyes. It was said that he was captured by the Mongols in the Kipchak steppe, Cumania and sold as a slave, ending up in Syria. Baybars was quickly sold to a Mamluk officer called Idakan al bond Abdur and sent to Egypt, where he became a bodyguard to the Ayyubid ruler as Saleh Ayyub. Rise to power, Baybars was a commander of the Mamluks under the Ayyubid. Baybars, particularly involved in the significant victory where he led the Egyptian army at the Battle of Lafourbi or also known as Battle of Harbia, east of Gaza in 1244 in the aftermath of Sixth Crusade. In around 1250 when he defeated the series of Seventh Crusade of Louis IX of France, he also involved in Battle of al Manshura, where he displayed the ingenious strategy Baybars ordered the opening of a gate to let the knights of the Crusaders enter the town. The Crusaders rushed into the town that they thought was deserted to find themselves trapped inside. The Crusaders were besieged from all directions by the Egyptian forces and the town population and heavy losses were inflicted upon them. Robert of Artois who took refuge in a house and William of Salisbury were both killed along with most of the Knights Templar. Only five Templar Knights escaped alive. He was still a commander under Sultan Kutuz at the Battle of Ain Jalut in 1260 when he decisively defeated the Mongols. After the battle, Sultan Kutuz was assassinated while on a hunting expedition. It was said that Baybars was involved in the assassination because he expected to be rewarded with the governorship of Aleppo for his military success, but Kutuz, fearing his ambition, refused to give him the post disappointing him. Baybars succeeded Kutuz as Sultan of Egypt. Sultan of Egypt. Once Baybars had ascended to the Sultanate, his authority was soon confirmed without any serious resistance, except from Sinjar al Halabi, another Mamluk emir who was popular and powerful enough to claim Damascus. Also, the threat from the Mongols was still serious enough to be considered as a threat to Baybars' authority. However, Baybars first chose to deal with Sinjar and marched on Damascus. At the same time the princes of Hammer and Homs proved able to defeat the Mongols in the First Battle of Homs, which lifted the Mongol threat for a while. On 17 January 1261, Baybars' forces were able to rout the troops of Sinjar outside Damascus and pursued the attack to the city, where the citizens were loyal to Sinjar and resisted Baybars, although their resistance was soon crushed. After suppressing the revolt of Sinjar, Baybars then managed to deal with the Ayyubids, while quietly eliminating the Prince of Karak. Ayyubids such as Al-Ashraf Musa, Emir of Homs and the Ayyubid Emir dynasty of Hama, who had earlier staved off the Mongol threat, were permitted to continue their rule in exchange for their recognizing Baybars' authority as Sultan. The next step which Baybars needed after this was religious authority. 
so he sought legitimation from the caliph in Baghdad, which was sacked by Il Khanat Mongol army earlier. So by becoming a protege of the caliph, he had all he needed campaign against the crusaders later, after Baybars was secure as sultan. He engaged was in a lifelong struggle against the Crusader kingdoms in Syria. Baybars did not forget how the Christians were aiding the Mongols, and started with the Principality of Antioch, which had become a vassal state of the Mongols and participated in attacks against Islamic targets in Damascus and Syria. In 1263, Baybars laid siege to Acre, the capital of the remnant of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. Although the siege was abandoned and instead Baybars sacked Nazareth, he defeated the Crusaders in many other battles, such as when he attacked Arsuf with siege engines from March 21 to April 30. After breaking into the town and forcing its defenders to surrender, he razed the castle to the ground. He next attacked Athleth and Haifa, where he captured both towns after destroying the Crusaders' resistance, and razed the citadels. In the same year Baybars laid siege to the fortress of Safad, held by the Templar Knights, which had previously been conquered by Saladin in 1188. On capturing Saft, Baybars did not raise the fortress to the ground but instead he fortified it and repaired the damage, as it was very strategically well constructed. He installed a new governor in Saft, with the rank of Wali later. In 1266, Baybars invaded the Christian country of Cilicia and Armenia, which, under King Hevam I, had submitted to the Mongol Empire. After defeated the forces of Hevam I in the Battle of Mari, Baybars managed to ravage the three great cities of Mamastra, Adana and Tarsus to the point when Hatumai arrived with Mongol troops, the country was already devastated. Hatumai had to negotiate the return of his son Leo by giving control of Armenia's border fortresses to the Mamluks. In 1269, Hatumai abdicated in favor of his son, and became a monk, but died a year later. Levon was left in the awkward situation of keeping Cilicia as a subject of the Mongol Empire, while at the same time he was paying tribute to the Mamluks. This isolated Antioch in Tripoli, led by Hethum's son-in-law, Prince Bohemon VI, after successfully conquering Cilicia, Baybars in 1267 settled his unfinished business with Acre, and continued the extermination of remaining Crusader garrisons in the following years. In 1268, he besieged Antioch, capturing the city on 18 May. Baybars had promised to spare the lives of the inhabitants, but he broke his promise and had the city razed killing or enslaving much of the population upon surrender, prompting the fall of the Principality of Antioch. The massacre of men, women, and children at Antioch was the single greatest massacre of the entire crusading era. Priests had their throats slit inside their churches, and women were sold into slavery. Then he continued to Jaffa, which belonged to Guide, the son of John of Ibelin. Jaffa fell to Baybars after 12 hours of fighting on 7 March. Most of Jaffa's citizens were slain, but the garrison was allowed by Baybars to go unharmed. After this he conquered Ashkalon and Caesarea. Diplomacy with Golden Horde in sometimes around October to November 1267, or about 666 Safar of Hijra year. Baybars wrote a condolence and congratulation to the new ascended Khan of the Golden Horde, Mengu Timur, to urge him to fight Abaka, despite the failure to incite him fighting between the Golden Horde and Il Khanat. Baybars continued to send warm correspondence with the Golden Horde particularly with Mengu T. Moore's General Nukai, who was very cooperative with the relation with Bay Bars unlike Mengu T. Moore. It is theorized that the factor of this intimacy was not only because of the religious connection, but also because Nokai was not really fond of Mengu Timur. However Baybars was pragmatic in his approach and did not want to share his hand for complicated intrigue inside Golden Horde and instead he stayed. 
Close to both Mengutimor and Nokai continued campaign against Crusaders in 1271, after Baybars captured the smaller castles in the area, including Chastel Blanc, he besieged Cracdes Chevalier's castle, held by the Hospitallers. On 30 March, peasants who lived in the area had fled to the castle for safety and were kept in the outer ward. As soon as Baybars arrived he began erecting mangonels, powerful siege weapons which he would turn on the castle, according to Ibn Shaddad. Two days later the first line of defences was captured by the besiegers, he was probably referring to a walled suburb outside the castle's entrance. After a lull of ten days, the besiegers conveyed a letter to the garrison, supposedly from the Grand Master of the Knights Hospitaller in Tripoli which granted permission for them to surrender. The garrison capitulated and the sultan spared their lives. The new owners of the castle undertook repairs, focused mainly on the outer ward. The hospitaller chapel was converted to a mosque and two mirabs were added to the interior. Baybars then turned his attention to Tripoli, but he interrupted his siege there to call a truce in May 1271. The fall of Antioch had led to the brief Ninth Crusade, led by Prince Edward of England, who arrived in Acre in May 1271 and attempted to ally himself with the Mongols against Baybars. So Baybars declared a truce with Tripoli, as well as with Edward, who was never able to capture any territory from Baybars anyway. According to some reports, Baybars tried to have Edward assassinated with poison, but Edward survived the attempt and returned home in 1272. Campaign against Macuria In 1272 the Mamluk Sultan invaded the kingdom of Macuria, after its king David I had raided the Egyptian city of Adab, initiating several decades of intervention by the Mamluks in Nubian affairs. Hostilities toward the dying Christian kingdom were sidelined as Baybar's invasion of Macuria continued for four years until, by 1276, Baybars had completed his conquest of Nubia. Under the terms of settlement, the Nubians were now subjected to paying Jilia tribute, and in return they were allowed to keep their religion. Being protected under Islamic law as people of the book, they were also allowed to continue being governed by a king from the native royal family. Although this king was chosen personally by Baybars, namely a Makurian noble named Shakanda. In practice this was reducing Makuria to a vassal kingdom, effectively ending Makuria's status as an independent kingdom campaign against the Mongols in 1277, Baybars invaded the Seljuk Sultanate of Rum, then controlled by the Ilkhanid Mongols. He defeated a Mongol army at the Battle of El Bastan and captured the city of Kayseri. Baybars himself went with a few troops to deal with the Mongol right flank that was pounding his left wing. Baybars ordered a force from the army from Hama to reinforce his left. The large Mamluk numbers were able to overwhelm the Mongol force, who instead of retreating dismounted from their horses. Some Mongols were able to escape and took up positions on the hills. Once they became surrounded they once again dismounted and fought to the death. During the celebration of victory, Baybars said that, How can I be happy? Before I had thought that I and my servants would defeat the Mongols, but my left wing was beaten by them. Only Allah helped us. The possibility of a new Mongol army convinced Baybars to return to Syria, since he was far away from his bases and supply line. As the Mamluk army returned to Syria the commander of the Mamluk vanguard, Is al-Din Iberg al-Sheikhi, deserted to the Mongols. Pervain sent a letter to Baybars asking him to delay his departure. Baybars chastised him for not aiding him during the Battle of el -Bistan. Baybars told him he was leaving for Syrus to mislead Pervain and the Mongols as to his true destination. Baybars also sent Abars al-Waziri with a force to raid the Armenian town of al-Romana, whose inhabitants had hidden the Mongols earlier. Death
Baybars died in Damascus on 1 July 1277. His demise has been the subject of some academic speculation. Many sources agree that he died from drinking poisoned kumis that was intended for someone else. Other accounts suggest that he may have died from a wound while campaigning, or from illness. He was buried in the Arizona Zahiria Library in Damascus. Family Baybars married several women and had seven daughters and three sons. Two of his sons, al said Barakar and Solamish, became sultans. Assessment As the first sultan of the Bara Mamluk dynasty, Baybars made the meritocratic ascent up the ranks of Mamluk society. He took final control after the assassination of Sultan Saif al-Din Qutuz. But before he became sultan, he was the commander of the Mamluk forces in the most important battle of the Middle Periods, repelling a Mongol force at the legendary Battle of Ainja Alut in 1260. Although in the Muslim world he has been considered a national hero for centuries, and in Egypt, Syria and Kazakhstan is still regarded as such. Sultan Baybars was reviled in the Christian world of the time for his seemingly unending victorious campaigns. A Templar knight who fought in the Seventh Crusade lamented, Rage and sorrow are seated in my heart, so firmly that I scarce dare to stay alive. It seems that God wishes to support the Turks to our loss. Ah, Lord God, alas! The realm of the East has lost so much that it will never be able to rise up again. They will make a mosque of Holy Mary's convent, and since the theft pleases her son, who should weep at this? We are forced to comply as well. Anyone who wishes to fight the Turks is mad, for Jesus Christ does not fight them anymore. They have conquered, they will conquer. For every day they drive us down, knowing that God, who was awake, sleeps now, and Muhammad who acts is powerful. Baybars also played an important role in bringing the Mongols to Islam. He developed strong ties with the Mongols of the Golden Horde and took steps for the Golden Horde Mongols to travel to Egypt. The arrival of the Mongols Golden Horde to Egypt resulted in a significant number of Mongols accepting Islam. Legacy Military legacy Baybars was a popular ruler in the Muslim world who had defeated the Crusaders in three campaigns and the Mongols in the Battle of Anjalut which many scholars deem of great macro-historical importance. In order to support his military campaigns, Baybars commissioned arsenals, warships and cargo vessels. He was also arguably the first to employ explosive hand cannons in war at the Battle of Anjalut. His military campaign also extended into Libya and Nubia. Culture and science He was also an efficient administrator who took interest in building various infrastructure projects, such as a mounted message relay system capable of delivery from Cairo to Damascus in four days. He also built bridges, irrigation and shipping canals, improved the harbors, and built mosques. He was also a patron of Islamic science, such as his support for the medical research by his Arab physician, Ibn al-Nafis. As a testament of a special relationship between Islam and cats, Baybars left a cat garden in Cairo as a WAQF, providing the cats of Cairo with food and shelter. Until this day its legacy of domesticated cats in Cairo is still seen. His memoirs were recorded in Surah Tel Zahir Baybars, a popular Arabic romance recording his battles and achievements. He has a heroic status in Kazakhstan, as well as in Egypt and Syria. Al-Madrasa al-Zahiriya is the school built adjacent to his mausoleum in Damascus. The Arizona Zahiriya Library has a wealth of manuscripts in various branches of knowledge to this day. The library and mausoleum are being reconstructed by Kazakhstan government fund. In 2009, a copy of Sultan Baybar's mausoleum in Damascus was to be built in Kazakhstan. In fiction, Baybar's figures prominently in the story, The Sowers of the Thunder, by Robert E. Howard. While liberties are taken with history for the sake of the tale, and many characters and events are purely imaginary, his character is fairly close to the folkloric depiction and the general flow of history is respected.
Baybars is the main character of a novel, Yemshan, by Russian-Kazakh writer Morris Simashko. Baybars is one of the main characters of Robin Young's books, Brethren and Crusade. Baybars is the main character of Jefferson Cooper's 1957 novel, The Swordsman. According to Harold Lamb, Haran of Baghdad in the Arabian Nights was really Baybars of Cairo. Baybars is one of the central characters in Lebanese-American author Rabi Alamedin's The Harkawiti. Baybars is one of the characters in the The Children of the Grail books by Peter Burling. Sultan Baybars, movie shot in 1989 by Kazakh National Cinema Studio, Kazakh Film, 1989. Kahira Kaka, her real biography of Sultan, written by historian Muizam Javad Bukhari.